Hello. It's uh, that time of week again when everybody asks the question, uh, Jason and Kaylin and Steven, uh, did you ever notice that the end of your names all end in N? And also, hey, did you see... this one? If you're wondering why it took me so long to say see this one it's because i forgot the word i was looking for so, oh. and then, but then but then i was like oh this has been going on for a long time so i'm just gonna keep going but hello everyone. i gotta say that was one of the smoothest intros i think you've done yet well thank you i'm i should probably just use that going forward i was almost gonna mention that it's my birthday but um i didn't i want to every one of those that we make could potentially be used for later things. And I will address that right now and say that I apologize that I haven't been keeping up on the YouTube uploads. Um, it's just life, man. Just life caught up. I got into a groove where I was able to put the podcast out. At a st like, I was growing, you know? I was putting out audio episodes. I was doing this and doing that. And then, you know, life just hits you in the, fake, in the face like a stack of uh, potatoes. That's not a saying. Um, and then you, here we are. What? It's week three. It's the final week of my birthday month. It's a little short, sh little shorty, because uh, there's only three Weird Al movies, and I wanted to cover Weird Al's filmography. So, um, hello, and welcome. Hello. Thank you for for coming. I'd like to welcome my co-hosts as always, Stephen and Kaylin. And it is true we do, and I'm Jason. And we all have the last name, the last letter of our name being an n and more so they all kind of end in like a un sound jason Kalon, it's Steve come on. to this has it <laughs> where this is how we have to start our episodes look why don't we enter the movie yeah okay <laughs> you're right okay i'm enjoying it oh okay well also where can i mean i, I have noticed that potatoes? before it's done wonders for you i want where do i get that glow what glow me the well, you said you got hit in the face with a sack of potatoes or a stack of potatoes. A stack of potatoes. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering where can I get a stack of potatoes because I want that glow as well. Well, well first you got to get yourself a sack of potatoes, yeah, and then stack them. Plastic stack or paper? Play player. Play player. Play player. <laughs> um, it's been one week since we looked at me. Uh, <laughs> That's, that was fun. I am talking about the Weird Al movie Weird, an Al Yankovic story from the year 2023 starring Daniel Radcliffe. It, this is maybe one of the newest movies we've ever covered. Possibly. Ooh. And also, we do oh, have a... Oh, Spree with the other one. We do have a... Spree was pretty new, too, at the time. Uh, but that was even still a few years old. The yeah. thing about this movie that's interesting is before I conceived the idea to do a Weird Al month... Um, we do have a month coming up that's going to be new movies where we're going to cover like Cocaine Bear and Megan in the summer. And uh, this was actually one that I was going to pitch for that month as it is Ooh. very new. But since I decided to make you guys watch every Weird Al movie in existence, and luckily for you, there's only three. I'm like Trey Parker. and Matt I love Stone Hawaiian shirts. Five. Um, we did it and we, we watched them in relative order. Well, we watched them in order. In perfect order. <laughs> I would have liked to do UHF first and then Complete Al because Complete Al, like this movie feels like a recreation of a lot of ideas in that. I feel um, to put them back to back though. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was better to sandwich. Yeah, maybe it's better to sandwich. But this also has a couple of elements of UHF in it as well, which we will talk about and more in our episode covering this film um but you know what we can end the pod right here i loved it it was amazing i it might have it might be a perfect movie it's pretty good for like as far as like a i guess if comedy. you have a specific like cookie cutter idea of what a perfect movie is then yeah uh oh here comes it. steve the fun police <laughs> <laughs> you better shut your filthy mouth if you're gonna call something a perfect movie look it goes scarface american psycho weird the Ali Yankovic story and then fight club 
Those are the and four greatest. Clockwork Orange. <laughs> and then Clockwork Orange. And then, Clockwork Orange. <laughs> and then Does Godfather. Does Canada have any cool like Mount Rushmore type of uh, tourist attraction? They should. And Listen, I, I also Pulp like this Fiction. movie, so <laughs> I'm not trying to ruin your fun. I know. I'm just kidding. You're just giving me a hard time. Um, but that said, we will talk about our... Uh, <laughs> You know, history with this movie. I'll just go first since it's my birthday and I get to do what I want because I'm a birthday host. Birthday what a host birthday boy. Birthday oh, I thought you were going to say because I'm a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> birthday host with the birthday most. Birthday most with the birthday host. Uh, sorry, that was too much. Uh, I watched it what, when I came, the week. What do you have? How much do you have? How much? What do I have? The most? Host, I guess. <laughs> Um, I watched it when it came out late last year, and then I watched it again today. In my history, what feelings do you have from when you first watched it? I okay. So the first time I watched it, I thought it was too short, and this time I watched it, it it felt like when you rewatch a movie like way too close to the first time you ever saw it. It just kind of even if I wasn't like taking notes, it's like it wasn't time yet for me to rewatch it. You know, but that said. You know, it's still a great movie. It's undeniably good, like and funny, and like l- genuinely funny, which is hard to to do. For me, to it's hard to make me laugh at a movie in a genuine way, like consistently, because I I've just like desensitize myself to comedy for so long. That it especially takes- when it's a. You know it's a parodied, like you know, uh, setting. You know all the, you know all the gags. Like that's yeah. another. Th- it's kind of like a, like I was talking about last week with UHF. It's kind of like a Mel Brooksy kind of um, airplane. The guys that made Airplane yeah. and and uh, the police show with Leslie yes, Nielsen. It is absurdist comedy. Absurdist comedy. <laughs> thank you. Is that what it's called? Well, yeah. Yeah, when ridiculous things are happening, like it's a cartoon show kind of thing, like. I like like when they, he was like, I thought I told you to shut up and like punches the accordion seller in the face and he flies <laughs> directly into a tiny, tiny little picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is one of my favorite parts of the movie, how mercilessly he beats up this poor salesman. Anyway, <laughs> played by Thomas Lennon, who is amazing. Um, that yes, said, um, Steve, why don't you tell us about your history? Your long, <laughs> engrossing history with this Epically well, I mean, I have, I've, I had watched this film. movie so recently that I was like, I don't even know if I need to rewatch it today because I've seen it so recently, and it's not something that I need to like reabsorb everything. So I kind of threw it on in the background today. Um, but yeah, I saw it when it first came out. I unfortunately, Roku does not exist for me, <laughs> so I had to, I had to steal it because it was like impossible to see it elsewhere. Um, some of these streaming services need to figure out their distribution, man. It's so you're isolating yourself so heavily. Yeah, I um, went to work today, gung ho, to watch the first hour on my lunch break, and luckily I had it on my computer from when it came out because I downloaded it because I didn't want ads. <laughs> uh, I you can't get Roku unless you have a Roku device, either an actual device yeah. or a Roku TV. Which I was like, they don't have like a just a streaming ch- website channel. How did you watch yeah. it, Kalen? Uh, well. <laughs> I will say this. When I have... I hope they make... No, sorry. I'll save that for the end. Arr! Okay, Steve, <laughs> sorry. Go go ahead. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if they have no other option, like, I'm not going to go buy a Roku device to watch one movie, you know? Like, do they have a lush catalog of films and television that I should be paying attention to at this You're point? You're missing out. Know. Yeah. Well, I don't have either, so I had to steal it, unfortunately. Um... I hate doing it. I always try to find a way to not to rent it somehow or to buy it, but unfortunately, I had to. I and watched UHF the reality. last week on my TV, which is a Roku TV. I bought UHF yeah. on my Xbox, and I was like, whatever. But the thing is, is like, I didn't even I didn't even consider that you couldn't just go to the Roku channel website. I was like, oh sweet, it's already on my TV. I'll just hit play. Because yeah. when this movie came out, you, you get ads for Roku Channel, and they were advertising UHF a bunch as well. Right. Um, I'm surprised they didn't put the complete owl on there, but we all know why that movie lives in YouTube only. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the first time I saw it, I enjoyed it. Second time I watched it, I also enjoyed it. So it's good. It's a fun, fun story, funny story. 
lots of fun cameos, ridiculous concept, just taken to the, you know, hyper uh, sort of realiz realization of how can you make things as ridiculous as possible without it being like dumb and having it still be, you know, funny. Orders up. Ding. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, I like that kind of comedy, right? Where it's like, it's so hyper violent and the action is so well choreographed, but like the concept of the fight itself is what is absolutely ridiculous, but not the fighting. It's like yeah, they're like, fighting in a diner and he's like John be... Wick fighting people. Yeah, this <laughs> is like, supposed okay, to be a weird Al's true story and he's, yeah. he's doing the fucking Rambo to pa Paul Escobar's fucking crew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Kaylin, give us your extremely long history with this film. I will. I will, birthday boy Jason, I will give you my extremely long history with this film, which started ages ago. And by ages, I mean a couple weeks when we had those few <laughs> weeks off. Um, we had a couple weeks off, and I had this movie on deck in preparation for the coming weeks. And I was like, ah, what's that word when you can't wait? Just anticipation, I guess. No, no, it's like, what's the sinful word or whatever? Like, uh, anyway, so impatient. <laughs> yeah, impatient. Yeah, impatient. Yeah, no Lord. temperance. No temperance. Um. Anyway, so I cracked and I watched it and I loved it. And then I watched it again the other night. Uh, to so I watched it a couple weeks ago to watch it, and yeah, I was like just like no notes or anything like that. It was just first time viewing. And I messaged you guys. You guys, we talked about it. Uh, I watched the other day, took notes, and then watched it again today because I like this movie so much, I could keep watching it more and more still. I feel like, Kaylin, you're the kind of person, like, you put, you just put movies on and fall asleep or just chill out and. That's put a not movie what I on. did with this one. But what I I'm only saying do is, that... I feel like you have rotations of, like, I, I've known this about you for years, like, from when we first met fucking 14 years ago now or whatever. But, like,. You just have movies that you have in rotation. When people come over to chill, you just put a thing on. And it's you're probably the last five movies you bought. And I can totally imagine this being a movie that you are just like, is in your rotation. Like, you'll just put on when you're chilling with friends or when saying. you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get this off work and you just want to put a movie on to like smoke one and have a drink. Like, and this yeah. is perfect for that. This is one of those things where it would have been really fun to watch with you guys, but it's also really fun yeah. to watch on your own, which is the opposite of a lot of the like horror movies we do where they're infinitely more fun to watch with somebody else than to just try to like analyze by yourself because a lot of horror a lot of 80s horror especially is fun and funny but like it's infinitely more fun when you watch it with your friends and this yeah. movie goes both ways is my point it goes both ways it's playing the accordion uh, in the yeah. closet in the closet you say you don't have to stay in the closet any longer it's you true. come on out you come on out of the closet I'll say kind of like a nice little uh, you know not so subtle message about that which is good so a little tip of the hat a little tip of the hat to the gay man and the gay woman and the tra trans and the i think now you're making it worse by I am. trying to get it. the spectrum of sexuality did i do that right yeah. that sounds good no? i got an idea what's no? your favorite type of pencil uh, to a a <laughs> Isn't that what he says? He's like, I need a number two I don't pencil. want his answer. I want your answer. What's your favorite type of pencil? Oh, I don't really... I never really paid attention to pencil types. I do. Steve's an artist, so he, he knows. I figured Steve would have an answer for this. and uh, I, I, have, I have many, many favorite pencils. I do like the point... Top three. Top three and why? Okay, well, number one... or I guess I'll start at the bottom. Number three is a... I believe a 2B. It's like a thick uh, lead and it's good for kind of like rough sketching stuff out. You just lit up like I light up talking about Final Fantasy. I and just want to <laughs> point that out to you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll use an HB to go in for a little bit more detail and then I'll use what's called a gum eraser which I actually have one right here. Ooh, I oh, know though. It's, oh wait, that, that's not a gum eraser. It's my headphone case. Oh, that's yeah. silly putty. It basically is like silly putty. And uh, then I, you use that to go over top of your pencil marks. It's called it's a technique called ghosting. So you basically like fade it all out. And then I'll go in with a mechanical pencil with a 0.005 lead in it to get really nice Ooh. hyper details in there. 
Ooh. And then I'll use some ink. No, that's four. I said three. Yeah, but ink is not a pencil, you fucker. Damn it, you win. <laughs> fucker. Um, when I was when I was when I would draw in like high school, I used to draw what I wanted, and then I would use one of those. I used to go to the art store and get those mechanical or like almost like mark, almost like a sharpie, but really fine. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I sharpie think, pen, kind of like micron, a, micron, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have like a billion micron pencils because they make those. Pens. They make like a giant range of them, right? They have some that are brushes. They'll have Isn't there one that that's like, like long, so you can get like wide and thin? Yeah, it's like a brush almost, so like you can like, yeah. yeah. I have so, a bunch of them right here. So but this, here's one. This is the thing. <laughs> it's a tiny guy. This is the uh, the part so of zero zero five. The part of the weird Al Youngovic story where we talk about pencils. <laughs> And I wonder why. Listen, we... some people might find this interesting. It's true. It's true. We do have. One you know what? I find this right weird. It's Al. It's Yankovic. This is weird as Al. So it is all out. compared to the other two movies, like this is pretty weird, but it's more funny than weird. Complete Al is just like it's weird. Like it just you you're like Ugh, the whole time for a myriad of reasons. And then UHF is like you can feel that era of Weird Al in it. And this feels like it this... also has a more traditional sort of story arc. Yeah, this feels like the a lot more like Walk Hard, where they took a story arc from these these kinds of movies and they filled it in with like the opposite of what you would expect for the whole thing. And it kind of starts out traditionally, right? Uh, we do a we do like a halfway through the movie intro where he's getting rushed into a hospital and it's kind of like the old it's weird al doing the narration he's kind of like oh i guess you he's kind of doing like a gravelly like i've been i've seen a long road um even though he's dead which is a spoiler but weird al is dead (laughs) diedrich bader i think is his name oh was it diedrich was it diedrich bader i thought it was weird al but you're right yeah, it's, it's the like guy from what's his name? Drew Carey. The Drew show. Carey show, and he does Batman. I think now. Office for... space. He's an office. Office uh, space. Yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. Yes. Um, he's in lots of things. That's funny because I knew that, and then I forgot, and then I t- all day today I was like, that was. I, he sounds so much like Weird Al. Anyway, my point is, is um, he's doing that. We get a narration from Al, um, and it starts, yeah, quote unquote. And it starts halfway through with him getting rushed into a hospital. And before we find out what is about to happen, uh, he says, well, we've gone too far. Let's go back to the beginning. Also, I want to point out um, Lin-Manuel Miranda is the, uh, this is the, we get a cameo like right away. There's a cameo in this movie by, uh, by uh, Josh Groban for like one second where he plays a waiter. And that's the kind of cameo you're going to get in this movie. Is that the filet one? That's yeah, like he come like he's the waiter when him and Madonna are like, you know, when that happened, I was like, the waiter's like, uh, here's your fillet or something like that, and I'm like, here's your filor because he slams it on the floor. That might have been a better moment, or maybe not. I don't know. It's <laughs> that's not what happened in the movie, <laughs> but I do like your. Uh, I do like your interpretation of that moment. Um, right. So f- rewind, like Kalen said, all the way back to the beginning. And we get uh, a kid Weird Al, kid Al Yankovic, Alfred Yankovic. The casting for this kid was amazing. Because you um, you see, well, we saw in the complete Al, these like same pictures they show at the end of him as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But that kid, the the casting of this kid looks that looks like a kid Weird Al. It's pretty uncanny, and uh, we get the parody of the biopic where like, you know, he wants to play the accordion, and she, the mom's like, you know, your dad doesn't want you to do that. And then he, you know, Al leaves the room, and she finds the, she finds the fucking uh, Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirt. shirt. Yeah, <laughs> she's like that was funny. I like that. It's like finding a porno mag or a, a, yeah. a bong, you know. <laughs> Um, which I thought was really good. A nice little turn of the tables. A little turn of the tables. Now the dad is played by that actor who's in like so many things. Uh, do you have his name, Kalen? I know you said you wrote some. Uh, Toby Huss. Toby Huss. Uh, I know him best from Halt and Catch Fire, but he shows up a lot in shows as like either 
like an old hard-headed guy who won't yeah. change or like a, just a dickhead he plays a complete dickhead in uh in animal kingdom in the flashbacks uh but he 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 plays a wide range of hard-headed old man to old man who is an asshole typically nice. but he's been in he's been in like if you look at his accolades he's probably been around since the 80s he's just been around forever um but he works al's, al's dad works at the factory and there's a running <laughs> gag through this whole movie where it's like what do you do at the factory it's like you'll find you out when you work there <laughs> and then you just never find out it's kind of and like, he works there he did he was working there when he asked finally still couldn't find out yeah um and then we the, the we get that scene at the co- at the dinner table where Al's like, I want to play music. I don't want to work at the factory. And the dad's like, Oh, you think you're funny? You think you're funny? We'll sing a song. And canonically, this is the first Weird Al music, and it's a parody of Amazing Grace. <laughs> but it's it's Amazing Grapes. How sweet uh, the taste, uh, which is great because. In my head, what I know about Weird Al is that he came up with the parody when he was around this age, and I think he has a brother in real life or something. Or he would say that like I, I've I've heard him in interviews say that like he came up with parodies in this in this way when he'd be on a long road trip, and he'd be hearing like kind of like movies today or back then. There were only a few songs and a few movies at a time. You didn't get like. You know, you don't have Spotify where you can discover a whole new genre of a thousand songs. You had like, and you don't have years and years prior. Exactly. Yeah. You had twenty songs total, so he'd (laughs) hear the same songs over and over on the radio, and he'd start to he'd start to develop these parodies. And I like to think that his in real life, his parents took him to fucking church, and he'd hear Amazing Grace. And I I like to believe that Amazing Grapes is based on a true story. I don't know if it's true, but I know that like my my Bologna is based off of. Maybe uh, not exactly how it happened in the movie, but pretty similarly, the Knack song was playing on the radio all the time. Um, anyway, we'll get to that. We're we're, we're gonna move we're gonna move through this at a quick pace. Can because... I give a Can I give a shout out to some of the best parenting advice you can give? Yep. Uh, stop being who you are and doing what you love. <laughs> you hear that, Steve? Give up on your dreams. <laughs> no. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> be an office manager um all right so this is where we get the great scene with thomas lennon he shows up he's the accordion salesman he gives al answers the door he gives al the accordion he says play it al goes and he's like it sounds awful and he's like oh kid you're a natural he's kind of got like a uh he's kind of got like a carnival barker kind of a vibe to him he's like ah kid you're great um, also kind of remind me of Cat in the Hat a little bit, sort of. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, Energetic and uh, just kind of like like welcoming, welcoming himself in kind of thing. Exactly. Well, he's trying to... Imagine how hard it would be to be a traveling accordion salesman. This is pro- Yo, he's probably Jack, man. Muscles, like, <laughs> lifting accordions around. Probably. Although... Isn't that part of the story that's, like, weirdly sort of true? I do believe you are correct from what I read. The part, yes. His parents were very, um, they weren't anti-anything. They were very nice people. His dad definitely didn't work in a nameless factory. I don't know about the, I, I, I don't know about the Amish thing that we'll talk about later, but I know that he didn't work in a nameless factory. I think they were teachers, in fact, or something like that. And they were very, like, when he wanted to take up the accordion, I think they were very supportive of that because it means that he wouldn't be out hitting bongs. Yeah, and, I heard there was a salesman, though. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Like, a salesman came yeah. and just, it, but it was more like a transaction where they just, he came and he was like, do you want to buy this? Right, right, right. And yeah. I was like, I love Lawrence Well. He didn't get beat the fuck out of him and, you know, dying on the floor. <laughs> And he's asking for help, and they're like, "Sir, we're having a moment." We're having Whatever. a moment. Well, I'll talk about that right now. So this guy's selling, trying to sell the accordion to the kid, and fucking the dad comes in in his fucking tank top, looking all like <laughs> ready to bare, bare knuckle box, and just well, to to be fair, 
he was about to tell a kid he was going to be swimming in pussy. That's if true. I was oh, that yeah. guy, I wrote that. Dad, I mean, I might punch, like, I don't know. He's you know, like, kid, you're going to, he plays that one note and it sucks. And then he's like, kid, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to need a lifeguard because you're going to be drowning in so much. P-. And the dad fucking rocks him. And then uh, just beats him for a solid 40 seconds. Just in the most hilarious, yeah. just sma- like smashing his brains. And then uh, boots him. And then leaves, and then the mom comes in, and the, while the dude's laying on the floor, like you said, Kalen, uh, the dude's just like, "Can I get some help? I think I have a collapsed lung." And and the yeah. mom is telling <laughs> Al, like, you know, your dad, your dad just, you know, he he just wants the best for you, and he thinks that you you're gonna waste your time with uh, with music. And Al's like, "Well, I just want to play music." And then that's when that's when the salesman says that. I was like, can, can you just, we're, we're having a family moment here. Uh, speaking story. of family moments, my uh, uncle uh, partakes in the accordion. Is he good at it? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to call him up and hang out with him and hear him play the accordion. Because I'm not sure if I've ever heard him. If I had a family member who played the accordion, I would be coaching them to learn Weird Al songs and then singing the songs. <laughs> or you could get them to co- coach you to play the accordion and you could just do both oh yeah that's much, that's much better that's much, wait that's much i'm gonna force my uncle to learn weird al song so i can scream the lyrics at him hey sometimes playing and singing is hard and playing and singing is hard i never learned how to do that i play the bass i can't can't go because it's like different it's hey, like different, different beats almost yeah yeah, I imagine it's easier to be like a frontman lead guitarist who doesn't like do solos, just a jin 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 and sing. But rhythm guitarist. Rhythm guitarist, yeah. <laughs> lead guitarist is the is the soloer. Thank you. I'm Hey, did you guys hear this one where we talk about music? Hey, did you hear this one? A jin 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 jin. That would be a good <laughs> podcast if um like music wasn't instantly DC, DC, DMCA'd constantly right yeah we could do it on tiktok we could do a music show on tiktok we'd get no viewers not that we hear that tiktok viewers stay stay uh, stay tuned no i don't do that anymore i haven't done it i haven't gone live on tiktok in so long that they revoked my fucking ability to go live on tiktok what do you still have a thousand people no like they revoked so there's like a an app on computer that lets you go live from the computer oh and that you need to do things to maintain, like go live a certain amount of times a month. Anyway, um, they, da- the dad beats the fuck out of him over the devil's squeeze box is the note that I wrote. Um, yes. So they, okay. So th- then the next bit <clears throat> is we, uh, weird owls on the bus. The, the two friends are like, hey, Al, and you think he's going to get bullied mercilessly. But it turns yeah. out he's got lots of friends and everybody likes him and he's cool. And I, I was wondering if that's a slice of reality. Maybe Weird Al didn't get bullied a bunch because I never hear about him talking about getting bullied. I was thinking the opposite. I was thinking basically everything that happened in this movie, the opposite of what actually is what actually happened. Like he was in love with Madonna, but she wouldn't give him the time of day, and he tried. <laughs> he like tried to offer her the the Yankovic bump, and she was like, "What are you talking about? That's not a real thing." <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, there's lots of little bits of inspiration that are taken from reality, and then they just make it crazy. Like next I don't think it's tell like. Me, next thing you're gonna tell me, Steve, is he didn't write "Eat It" before we're, before Michael Jackson <laughs> wrote "Beat It." Yeah, see, like that's hilarious. That they're like in the movie, he made the song first, and like to the point that I was like second guessing. I'm like, that's not true. And I was like, wait a minute, of course <laughs> nice. not true. It worked. <laughs> well, then it did its job. There was one moment though that that I don't know for sure. So you know, in the in the in the party scene where the guy from Queen. Oh, by the way, real quick, tap, uh, tap, tip of the hat to. Honorable title mention when they first say weird. 31 minutes, 42 seconds. Sorry for interrupting. That's okay. That's okay. So you know when the guy from Queen, who's played by the guy who plays uh, Polka Dot in the Suicide Squad, and he's also in the Dark Knight and stuff, 
he comes yeah. up and he's like, I'm the guy from Queen. Um, would you like to play Live Aid? And he was like, hell no. But then in the song, at the end, he says, except everything in this movie was true, except for that one part about Live Aid, where that's actually, I actually did play in Live Aid and we killed. Yeah. I think both of those are lies. <laughs> which yeah. is like, so many layers. Because I don't think yeah. I don't think Weird Al played at Live Aid. I mo- Maybe he wanted That's to play at Live Aid. Yeah, they would have let him. Even though he like, I don't think he has five platinum records. But also, like, I'm pretty sure Weird Al did really well musically. Like, sold millions of records. <clears throat> Are you looking up if he played at Live Aid? <laughs> I mean, blew them off the freaking stage. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so they they pa- they paint Al cool. Was my yeah. point. Um, the uh, turn the tables again. Right. The, his friends tell him to come to this party tonight. Um, turns out to be a poker party, which we'll get to in a sec. And they say, just he's like, I can't sneak out. He's like, you don't have to tell. You know, I can't tell my parents. Like, you don't have to tell your parents. You just sneak out. He's like, I can't sneak out. Just leave a hey boy. And this hey boy <laughs> gag. When I watched this movie for the first time, I thought it was the fucking funniest shit. And today, I was did you never it. do that as a kid? I know I never had to because my mom didn't care and was drunk. Um, so I, can I interject a little story? Oh my god! You tell me you didn't put like shoes in your bed. Well. No, not that extreme. So I uh, I don't remember the exact specifics, but my there w- my mom had some friends over, and then and they were like staying for the week or the weekend or something like that, and then one of them took something from the other one, like kind of jokingly or whatever, and they were like withholding it from the other person, and then um, so when I you know, I was little, I was a little kid, I got sent to bed, and I had uh, a stuffed animal that was essentially the same size as me put that in my bed you know put the blanket and you know made it look all kind of proper as much as possible anyway and then like i like i found like some hiding places and was like doing some like covert operation and like stole back the the shirt or whatever it was for my mom's friend and gave it and like i think i took it and i think i stayed hiding for a while something like that i don't know i remember they were like ah because they checked when I wasn't there, like when I was doing the covert from A to B, they did go check in on me. And then they're like, oh, he's fine. And then we talked about it like, I don't know, either the next day or the next week or something like that. You know, uh, I just want to give you a little tip about storytelling, Kalen. Make it better? No, it's not even make it better. It's like more, just more details. <laughs> Here's what I, <laughs> in my head, what you just said is you decided to pretend to use a stuffed animal to like make you the size of a i don't even know really what happened make it look like i was in bed sleeping yeah but were you the one were you the one that stole the thing no 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 no, no. so this is tied into the hand okay you're gonna never mind it's like uh you're gonna give you're gonna give steve a fucking aneurysm here's my tip about storytelling make sure the story is actually interesting before you tell it okay that's a good that's a good advice but my bad for continuing on with that anyway i want to make a point about the hey boy and the hey boy thing is extremely funny to me because of the way that it's like that's a thing like that's a thing that people do um and also it really reminded me of like tim and eric for some reason i don't know how much tim and eric you guys watch but they had these fake commercials um for Cinco products and the Cinco yeah. products were all, always like, they're supposed to make your life easier, but they add, a, just add a step to everything that you have to do. <laughs> so it's like, I'm not going to try to recite them because I hate telling other people's jokes. But anyway, go check out Tim and Eric. You'll see a Cinco product. And it's always like, tries to make your life easier, but adds a step. And I feel like the Hey Boy is sort of in line with that because what you could do is just use your, stuffed animals in your clothes to like make it look like there's somebody in the bed or you can be extremely elaborate like ferris bueller (laughs) and like make a string that pulls your blanket up and down and a snoring sound and like a tape that plays if the door is turned uh the hey boy made me laugh is is my point the first time i saw this movie i will say i laughed way harder at all these jokes but it says a lot about this movie that on a second viewing so close to the first time, 
and not watching it with somebody else, I was still like sitting at my desk or at my couch, just like <laughs> grinning like an idiot. Um, also, when they put Al to bed, I, or I, I think it's his parents that say this when when they put him to bed. He says the mom says, "Don't let the bed, uh, good night, and don't let the bed bugs give you night terrors." I thought that was really <laughs> funny. Um, anyway, the next bit is the kids are having a party. And they all love polka because kids in the seventies obviously loved Lawrence Welk. Another turn of the table. Yeah. And Al's there, like, I don't wanna if my parents find out that I'm a polka party, they're gonna lose their shit. And the kids are like, Whatever, man, go get the thing. And of course you think it's gonna be a bong or whatever. And they're talking about all this like you could totally just insert Led Zeppelin and and Black Sabbath for the music they're talking about. Uh, yeah. And the the accordion is just a bong, and when they like, yeah, kind of like double speech or whatever. Yeah, like double yeah. Um, and they're when they when they're trying to coax him into playing the accordion or hitting the bong, uh, they're just doing the chicken dance at him, which I thought was a really funny little little thing. Is the chicken dance an accordion song? It's yes. a polka, yeah. It's a yeah, polka, it's a but polka it's also song. got dance moves, so it's like everybody's doing it. Um. Which is a little ripple that I that I kind of pulled out of that, but anyway, like that. Weird, that. yeah. when Weird Al hits the bong or plays the accordion, he's been secretly practicing for years. So at this point, so he's a legendary at it, <clears throat> which I think is another like ripple of truth because I think Weird Al has just been a gifted accordion player right from the beginning. Like obviously you have to learn how to play something, but he started so young that I think. He, he may have just adapted to it extremely quickly. He might have been lonely. That, that's the good thing about learning things at a young age. Absolutely it is. Um, if you're watching this and you're a teenager, pick up an instrument. It's not too late, but you should, you're should you getting there. <laughs> just, like, uh, just like in Star Wars and Padawans. Sorry, Steve, you made a face that's like, don't shit on people's dreams to play guitar in their 40s. Honestly, Some people don't they, learn until they're adults. That's true. I was gonna say, like, in 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 context, that if I was to pick up a guitar tomorrow, I would suck, and I could probably learn a thing or two. But I don't think I could become a virtuoso at guitar at the end of my thirties. Maybe I could. Who knows? In fact, tomorrow I'm gonna take up the guitar and my. But new... I mean, you could also say it for anything. It doesn't have to just be music. That's true. That's true. I mean, practice makes. The 10,000 hours principle is a pretty solid thing to look at when you're like learning something. Because if you do anything for 10,000 10, hours, you're going to be an expert. For instance, I've played video games for 10,000 hours. But I've played cert I haven't played FPS for 10,000 hours, you know? So I'm not that good. But I've played JRPGs for 10,000 hours. On easy mode. I don't play <laughs> easy mode. What are you talking about? You can't even play JRPGs on easy. They've got one setting. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shots uh, fired over the bow by old silent over here <laughs> oh we can't do that on his on the birthday boy's birthday day no trust me the the prime time to rip on jason is a special event the rest of the time is just whatever he'll get his um yeah video games are also more of a thing that you do for narrative enjoyment like watching a movie right i don't know like if you're you're going to become a master of video games by playing I was thinking them. About that the other day. You're going to become a master of movies by watching them because I know a lot of people that have probably watched over ten thousand hours of movies and are still illiterate when it comes to cinema. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> Kalen, no, yeah, you I was pretty thinking good. about that the other day though. When it comes to video games, when you think about it, you're just pushing buttons. Like if you if you ignore all the other shit, you're just pushing don't, buttons. Don't, That's fucking weird. Don't give me that realization because I do have that realization sometimes, especially when I'm playing rhythm games, and I'm yeah. like I'm just pressing buttons to a beat. I mean, it's the same thing when you're watching movies though. It's just as weird that you're sitting there watching at a glowing <laughs> image box. I was having that That's moment true. today, <laughs> sitting yeah. fucking one foot away from my computer screen. Like if aliens came down and didn't know what television was, they would think that we were all being hypnotized by something every and, day for several hours. You know, a lot of <laughs> er, a lot of like philosophers uh, during the era of the invention of television 
we're like they're, that's gonna ruin society you know it's gonna ruin it in a, in a lot of ways now what we do is this so yeah. <laughs> TV did kind of ruin society in a lot of ways but also has enhanced a lot of things um, yeah gave it that Yankovic bump you give it the yank of a bump. Thank you, Caleb, for putting us back on track. Anyway, the kids are having a poker party. They're having a poker party, and they're hitting that sweet, sweet accordion. And I love that. Uh, I love that the kid picks it up, and the other kids just playing fucking what's it called? Sticks, pick up sticks. What's the fucking da, 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 jacks? Da. Oh no! Oh oh oh! Chopsticks. 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 Yeah, yeah. He's playing chopsticks while the other guy like manipulates the fucking blowhorn part. I don't know what it's called. I don't, I'm not an expert at accordions. Maybe if I played it for 10,000 hours, I would be. Um, but then Al's like, they're like, why don't you try? And then he plays and blows all their minds. And then the cops come, because that's what happens at a teen, uh, a teen party. And one of the cops is Scott Ackerman, host of Comedy Bang Bang, which is a great show. The funnier die circle and the Comedy Bang Bang circle or almost a circle if you if it's a venn diagram um and a lot of the people in this movie are fans of are friends of that show and friends of funny or die funny or die was actually originally created by um adam mckay and will ferrell um they wanted to make a streaming like a youtube channel kind of thing <clears throat> where they could have better content i don't know if funny or die still has original content being made for it i don't even know if it's really even still a, a like a more more than a like a movie production company at this point but like they produced between two ferns was another movie. i think i have their board game there's a funnier die board game yeah cool i'd like to know what the premise is for that it's kind of like um not exactly cards against humanity but like in uh, that in that vein yeah um so the police bring al home and his parents are very furious and he gets a frank and Folsom with his dad who's like ha if you were playing the accord okay let me back up a little bit so like, he's like i heard there was accordion there and al's like i'm so good at the accordion i can't believe that you would like stomp all over my dreams like that and the dad's like how are you so good at accordion and i was basically like I have been practicing very quietly. He's like, you've been practicing in my house under my roof? And he's like, yeah, in the closet. He's like, in the closet? And not, it's a very thinly veiled um, thing. And then uh, and then he's like, oh, in the closet. And then he realizes that that's where the accordion is. And he brings it out and he smashes it to bits. I my wanted... heart hurt a little bit. Yeah, that sucks. It sucks a lot. I'm sure many kids had their skateboards broken, their guitars broken, uh, more intensely kicked out of the house for being gay. You know what I mean? Which is what I thought was going to happen when I first saw the movie. I thought that they were going to do make a joke about him getting kicked out at like 14 or whatever. Which might have not played as well, you know? It might have been a little bit too hardcore. Yeah, I think they knew where, where to... Yeah, a line in terms of like the allegory that they're going for. It's just like, yeah, let's just uh, let's just make a funny joke and then funny. move forward. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically they fast forward to his college years, and then they, but he just says like, you know, it was a hard l last couple years in that household, but I did eventually graduate and move to California, or move to uh, like what's what uh, what's by the water. Uh, it's Venice. Not, it wasn't yeah like Venice Beach. Um, Los Angeles, basically. So, that's when we get the home alone of it all, in my opinion. When we get this Daniel, is the home alone of it all. I think when Daniel, okay. so there's two home alones of it all to me in this. When Daniel Radcliffe appears, but then also it could be it could be debated that after he has his uh, acid Alona. trip and becomes an asshole, oh, and it becomes like he becomes a dick and then it has a redemption arc. Um, so I don't know. What did you guys think? Did you? I you... say the Bologna. As soon as as soon as the my Bologna, that's the home alone of it all. Okay. How about you, Steve? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think my as soon Bologna? as he as soon as he makes his first parody song as an adult and realizes that he's onto something, or like his 
dead-eyed roommate from <laughs> the Unbreakable franchise realizes oh. that he has yeah. his moment there. That guy I know f- most, the, his buddy that <laughs> plays the bassist, who plays Jay Levy, is um, he's also on that Animal Kingdom show I was talking about. And he's a dead-eyed weirdo on that as well. He's got an awesome... This way, is it him or someone else? So Bermuda, line, Bermuda's the drummer, another who's line. the voice of reason. The guitarist is the guy that doesn't say much with the curly hair. And the yeah. guy that has, like, the the long hair who's like you know so he's like what do you want to do and like sometimes i just go out onto the road onto the 101 and i close my eyes and drive on the wrong side of the road and just i don't care what happens that Suck is it, Mom and dad that is yeah <laughs> that that was hilarious that's the guy from a bunch of stuff um yeah he was the he's the most recognizable like actor who was in a com- a cameo in this besides Daniel Radcliffe in my opinion maybe Rain Wilson but even Rain Wilson felt a bit cameo-y even though he's third build and uh, Rachel Evan Wood or Evan Rachel Wood um, is basically she kind of hides in this role she disappears because she doesn't usually play like somebody who wears like a shit ton of makeup she usually plays like a pretty she does a lot of indie movies i'm thinking of kajillionaire specifically did you guys see kajillionaire no i think you'd enjoy it it's kind of a movie about um this girl who was raised by like schemers like uh con artists so she becomes extremely proficient at being a, a con artist so when her parents like can't do a scheme or like a, a con, they get her to do it, and she's just extremely good at it. But then she kind of realizes how shitty they are. She's been indoctrinated by them for so long. It's kind of like a it's kind of like a black comedy kind of thing where it's funny, but like, ugh, you know. Right. Um, that's where I know her most from. I know that she's been in like a lot of things, but I digress. The part here that I wanted to talk about is that the first thing we get is he, he, he's walking down the beach and he wants to be a musician. He wants to write his songs that are... <laughs> Who would want to listen to an already written song with the lyrics changed? What kind of sick freak would want to listen to a song that's already been written just with different lyrics? Which is a thing he actually says later in the movie. After, much like I think his dad says it at the beginning. I think that's also in the, tra- the trailer, the fake trailer. The fake trailer, yeah. Yeah. I noticed that, speaking of the fake trailer, um, I noticed that Aaron Paul is actually thanked in the special thanks part at the very end yeah. of the credits. And Aaron Paul actually played his part, just for the people that don't know, actually played his part in that original Funnier Die sketch. And let's just talk about that for a sec. It um, follows basically the same beats as this movie. It's only about five minutes long. Um, but the thing is, is when that after that came out, the reason why this movie got created is because people pined for it for so long that eventually they had to go, you know what? We got to make this thing. Give the people what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And they did have, like, they did have Aaron Paul in mind, but I think... We should keep that in mind when we want to get things done. Have Aaron Paul in mind to get it done for us? Bitch. <laughs> Science, bitch. Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, we have to cook. Sorry. Can I say that uh, the My Bologna kind of whole sequence, uh, I thought the editing, like, it, the the... So, like, in movie magic, it's like a thing repeats in your mind, which they kind of do. They start off with, but then they, like, do a little spin, turn the tables where it's actually happening. The radio is repeating it. And then, and, um, was that? Yeah, we can go into that now. That's, that's, and then, so, yeah, so basically what happens is they're sitting around after, well, okay, just before, Kaylin, hold that thought. All I wanted to bring up was that he goes to an audition for like a punk band called like Nose Barf or something like that. And he does a cover of um, Beat on the Brat by uh, the Ramones. And they're like, you, he's like, you suck. And that's another cameo by that guy. He's on Superstore. He's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, and it's hilarious. He gets, uh, he gets um, sort of defeated again. 
And then they're sitting around their apartment. He's like, I have my, he talks about, I got these roommates and uh, me and my roommates all had big dreams to do different stuff. And that's where we get the one guy who's like, I'd like to play the guitar in front of people. And the guy's like, and the other, his other buddy's like, "Ah, sometimes I like to drive down the highway with my eyes closed on the wrong side. (laughs) Yeah. And Al's like, I want to write songs. I want to write songs that already exist, but with different lyrics. Uh, (laughs) And then he's like, well, that's a pipe dream. And then his friends were like, can you make us a sandwich? And he goes in and he sees the bologna and he says, Hey, you know, can I use this bologna Jay? And he's like, uh, so it's the line from the song. And he starts making the bologna sandwich. And then my Sharona by the knack comes on the radio. And then Kaylin, go ahead. I caught us up to what you were saying. My apologies. I thought I, when we were talking about the kid from, uh, unbreakable, I thought we were there. But yes, continue. Continue. continue what you're saying. <laughs> we get the the initial movie edit, uh, like the movie magic of oh, you know, it's you're, we're in his head and it's he, it's repeating in his head. He, it's like oh, he's got this tapeworm or whatever it's called. Something's brewing. But then we get the turn of the tables, where it's like no, the radio is just like it skipped the <laughs> the the record skipping on the and radio. And I like or, how the, I like how Bermuda hits like he hits the radio like hey come on wait like up. that's gonna fix it <laughs> yeah I think because he, he goes like I think the DJ is asleep and he hits it and goes wake up um <laughs> and then that's yeah and weird I was looking at the baloney and he's saying at the he same it time, cut, like yeah inspiration hits uh, who's that uh the muse or whatever yeah um and. When uh, his buddy's like, oh, I just got chills. As he, like, I got chills as what, like, the editing of that scene was, in my opinion, fantastic. Oh, like, great. it just, the, the, the sound, just everything. Also, there was a great line that made me laugh out loud both times watching this movie, where I think Bermuda or Jay say, Al, you got something here. I don't know if it comes from God or the devil. <laughs> I think that's a little, it's a little intense, but. And both. in the context of the movie, in the context of the movie, yeah, but definitely both. And then Bermuda is just like, "Why don't we, you know, we have to record this?" And he's like, "Why don't we record it in a bathroom? That's got great acoustics." So that's we just get a sequence that I assume is like a shot-for-shot shot remake of what actually happened, of like people coming in and out of like a fucking gas station bathroom or or a bus station bathroom while they're trying to like record this uh, this parody. Yes, um, my Bologna. True. I have a list of true and false things here. Yes, I did. I did know that's true. Okay, your fact. My Bologna was, <laughs> yeah, recorded in a public bathroom, just not at a bus stop. Oh, okay. I thought it was a bus station specifically. The um, the good thing about this movie is it caused Al to have to re-record a bunch of his classics, and I. Think, I was wondering that. I think why it's why the why the songs they use in this are so specific must have something to do with them being his biggest hits they're definitely his singles but like i I don't know why they chose amish paradise i think it's because that was the last time he had like a really high on the billboard charting song it's been a while since people who are weird al me for instance uh forget that weird al for the normal pop culture person just comes and goes over the years, you know, like he'll pop up be like, Oh, they made it he made weird. I was back with a parody. I have felt him being gone, but people don't realize that he's gone right. during this whole time in the nineties. He was constantly around. He was part of pop culture. And I feel like he peaked at bad hair day. I think bad hair day was his biggest, like the highest he would, he went, he did, he was doing much music, much uh, Al TV, um al music you know he was making cameos in movies he was doing songs for movies like the song from spy hard for instance what happened in his real life in 85 because doesn't he die in 85 so maybe something about 85 has significance well 1985 was when he would like popped off oh so then maybe that's okay yeah well he got oh, shot okay. at the grammys yeah, and then right. came back okay. as a zombie but apparently that's that's right, okay. that's what I learned from this movie is that if they make a sequel to this, they're just gonna be like, "Oh, he's a zombie." It's gonna be thriller. It's gonna be. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be funny if Weird Al did an album of retroactive parodies, <laughs> like just 
his one of his final albums of his career he's like these are the these are all the songs i wanted to do and now that all the artists are dead i can do them because who cares i think that would be a funny thing but he's got more respect for artists than that it, you know who it's fu- it would be funny if there was a dickhead weird al like a like an anti weird al who made just as we good get a parodies. little snippet in this badass weird al was fucking badass no, i don't mean that though i mean like if there was a parody artist who rivaled Weird Al, oh, but had like yeah. ruthless tactics, like didn't ask Negaduck. for Negaduck, the Negaduck to his, uh, it seems like a team. like like a Nick Kroll character or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> I don't ask for the fucking right. Yeah. I just do. You <laughs> ask for permission. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, uh, Richard Cheese, he just does lounge versions of songs, but that's very much like could yeah. be considered. I think that a lot of it. Like I, I hate to sound like the the old man who's like kids today. Their music is bullshit. But I feel like there's like there comes a time in a person's life where maybe he's just not able to find yeah. the 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 song that he can parody anymore. Because it's like music now is is a lot. It's changed completely yeah. from what it was in the '80s and '90s and even the early 2000s. And like I can't really imagine what kind of music he would parody. I think he could now. parody Billie Eilish. I think he could parody, yeah. but like it's, he could parody J. Biebs. Justin Bieber even's kind of like he could par- he'd like do. A yeah, he could have like, done that in two thousand eleven. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> like, he could parody like, um, and he did. He put he put baby baby in a polka, but he could parody like um, the boy like BTS, uh, Harry Styles. Um, he could parody Nickelback. Avril Lavigne, because they're both they both exist in this current era. But nobody they do. They're making new kind music. Of, exactly. <laughs> this I mean? current era? Are you talking about right now, or yeah. are you talking in the present sense of a past sense? No, in the present sense, they both they've both recently put out music. Um, but you're right. The main pop music is what we hear on TikTok. Yeah, and that kind of music doesn't yeah, really lend yeah, its... Sentimental man or woman to pump me up. Lizzo? He could parody so, Lizzo. Yeah, I get, yeah, I just... I don't feel like it lends itself to parody as well as some of the other stuff that no. he's done in his career, you know? That's right. true. And that's... Even his last couple albums, they were more... They were, like, the couple parody songs. I mean, like, two or three instead of, like, five. And then a polka, a pastiche, a style parody, a style parody of old bands that he never got to do back then. Um, and I, you know, I think if Weird Al was going to put out an album in 2023, it would have to be this kind of thing or be like one parody, one actual parody, and then a bunch of like paying homage to old music. And he's never been that. He's never been just paying homage to old music. He's, he tries to stay current. But if you're right, Steve, I don't think it's like you sound like an old man i think that he's literally i also don't think it's impossible 65 yeah i and just think it's like maybe he just doesn't have interest in doing that he right probably now, has no it's... interest in covering yeah. ice spice or yeah. tie, tie dollar sign you know <laughs> <laughs> he's probably does you know he probably doesn't he probably can't turn amigo's song which is all about doing things to strippers he probably can't kids bop that into like a funny song about lasagna pizza <laughs> i can yeah. do it right now <laughs> We're not saying it's impossible, Kalen. We're saying that he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Weird Al has such a specific way that he writes his like lyrics. He doesn't just change the chorus. He he parodies all of the the flow. the story arc or whatever. The, yeah, he parodies the whole flow of the song. There's um in one of the documentaries I saw him, saw him or an interview from over the years. He, I've seen somehow I've seen his diary like his like for the when he first writes a parody and he starts mm-hmm. to write it out it looks like a map where he's mapping like the original words to the new words he's going to use and how they're going to tie like he writes it like a like a comedy nice. act almost yeah and not just like you've like like we were talking about the complete owl episode how there's there's shitty youtube parody artists like the key of awesome who literally just make it they hit you over the head with the joke for the whole song but if you listen to yeah. a weird owl song the chorus is the hit you over the head part but then you listen to like what he's doing and there's a lot going on there. Um, I think one of the best examples of it is foil, which is a parody of Lord, her song Royals, 
And it's just the three parts of the song are just three different uses of tinfoil. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's stupid, and it, but it's funny. What, like it's... fish on the barbecue? No, like uh, he's got one one of the like pros. Like making a hat to protect you from aliens? Yeah, one of the pros is about that. One is about like f- the food element, and I, I can't remember. I'd have to look at the lyrics to, to explain it. I'm not. This isn't a Weird Al podcast, although that's a good idea. Put that. If you want to hear me talk about Weird Al for hours and hours, I'll do it. Um, Does he talk about when it shocks your teeth if you have fillings? I think so. Listen to the God. listen to the song Foil. It shocks your teeth. Wait, are you putting tinfoil in your mouth? I don't well, know if you're okay. supposed to do that. It wouldn't... It might not shock my mouth because I've had all the metal taken out and replaced with... Uh, Resin. A, enamel or tooth or whatever they use nowadays. But... <laughs> In the 80s and 90s, they filled your teeth with, like, a metal that if you chewed on tinfoil, it would hurt. Gross. My apologies to our younger crowd. Yeah, they were like, what are you talking about? That's I've literally <laughs> never had that in my mouth before. Like, your, your filling could pop out, and it'd be, like, this little piece of metal. It's fucking weird. And also, the like, there's that myth that you could pick up radio stations... That I don't know if uh, it's totally a lie. Just saying. I think there could be some truth welcome, to it. Welcome to Jason's. I thought that was braces. Corner. I think it's oh, the combination actually, yeah, of braces right. yeah, and braces. metal in your teeth. You can pick up Chinese radio stations. No, um, specifically Chinese ones. Specifically. <laughs> <laughs> the spy channels. The spy channels. Apparently, they were spying. Okay. I mean, everybody's spying on everybody all the time. We're not privy to that information, though. Um, and then okay. I did like how much he enjoyed uh, in listening to his own music when he brought it to the CEO of uh, the music. Well, company. we're not quite there yet, but I, I do want to talk about that because the next thing that happens is uh, they record that and then they send it to uh, Doctor Buffoon or whatever. Right, right, Mr. right, right. Buffoon. I don't know if it's a real person. No, I think that's. Uh... I think they're twisting some truths there. Well, it's because he did originally send it to Dr. Demento, and Dr. Demento is a huge character in this movie, so they can't... You know what I mean? They had to change that a little bit. But um, he comes home. He's like, I just gave it to Mr. Buffoon, and, you know, I'm hoping to get famous immediately. And his friends are like, you can't get famous overnight and then the radio station just comes on he's like i'm gonna put on the radio radio station comes on like well i got this tape here from uh al yankovic and it's of course my bologna and they're all losing their mind um so they did kind of become famous not even just that afternoon like hours later um and then i like when they slapped each other (laughs) they slap each other and then they start losing their mind like instant barbarian style they start smashing the whole fucking room that's weird al yankovic this might be the greatest moment of hey did you see this one (laughs) of all time (laughs) Was I distracting you? I'm sorry, that wasn't my intention. You did, but it wasn't bad. Um, <laughs> this is the part where they go to the record producer because naturally Al's like, "I got something here, folks." And who is the who's the record producer played by? I gotta grab something. Tell them about it. Uh, I believe the record producer is played by. Oh, would you look at that, oh. Alfred Yankovic. Who's Alfred Yankovic? Like, I've never heard that name before. I think that's his real name. Is that his real name? It absolutely is his real name. I can't remember his I'm only basing that off of this movie. I can't remember his... I... What? I, I didn't look up... I didn't I didn't look too deep into Weird Al and like his specifics, but I'm assuming based off of this movie, his name's Alfred. Yes, it is Alfred. He's got some middle name too. Um, like Matthew Char- or something. Yeah, like or Charles or something. Uh, that I did know at one point, but do you know who the other record producer is in this in this part? Will Forte, one of my favorites. Will Forte is amazing. Oh, Larry, I'm, I'm glad he made it into this movie because after um, after he made uh, Last Man on Earth, he kind of disappeared. He hasn't really yeah. been in anything. Well, he had a child dad. or something, and he's probably just being a dad for a probably little. just being a dad for ten years or whatever. Whatever actors yeah, who have like a pretty nice. good career do. I'm down with 
Cool, that's good to know. I saw him pop. He's in something that's coming out or just came out. Uh, I saw him in a trailer for something, so hopefully he'll be back. He's very funny. He was in I Think You Should Leave as like a, a grown adult man pretending to be a baby. Or he's like wants to fuck somebody over on a plane because when he was a young man, a baby was next to him and ruined his flight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he sits next to that man. <laughs> and goes, <"Wah!" laughs> yeah, and the, But then he gets moved to the back of the plane. You're in the wrong seat, sir. I think No, should... but can I stay, though? <laughs> I Think You Should Leave has... Uh similar energy to this movie and also has like everybody in it the the bit where the fred willard plays that like machine was that in that where he plays like the boom boom he's he's replacing the organist at a funeral and he's playing a wacky like nickelodeon or whatever they're called (laughs) and he keeps breaking plates yeah (laughs) Yeah, if you haven't seen I Think You Should Leave, that's, uh, and you like Weird Al, Tim Robbins, Tim Robbins, also the Detroiters. What's the joke, that I take massive farts? <laughs> that my massive farts are so bad that people puke when they smell them? <laughs> Is that the joke? <laughs> I don't want to be around anymore. Um, sloppy sticks. I, uh, if you haven't seen the Detroiters, uh, it's not as funny. It's more of like a absurdist sitcom. Um, that's kind of endearing. It's, uh, it's it's a Comedy Central sitcom, so it's like it's quality, but uh, it's not bingeable. I feel like I can only handle like one episode at a time. But that's where he came from before SNL. And uh, there's another guy. Like his partner on that show is from stuff as well. If you guys saw the Werewolves Within movie, he's in that. Did you guys see the Werewolves Within movie? Is that the one with what's your face? But it's the one with uh, uh, Van Treb. Van, uh, what's her fucking? I name? think you guys told me about it. Yeah. The werewolves within. Yeah, it's based. It's a Ubisoft movie based on the game. Oh, that's right. No, never mind. I'm thinking of something else. Um. When... <laughs> this is the part of the show where we look things up. <laughs> Um, oh yes, I saw this. Yeah, with M- Melania Van Van Treb, who's one of my faves. I remember um, almost nothing. <laughs> it's basically like a werewolf mystery, and it's a very like we were spoiled because of The Last of Us. But I will say that they kind of captured the essence of what it's like to play werewolves within. I have it for VR, and I've played it a couple times, and it's also based off a card game. But it's essentially like Among Us, but instead of like instead of doing tasks and trying to figure out who the alien is, you just have to talk to each other and figure out who the werewolf is. Yeah. I've played the card game, but I've never played played the the video game. I think I, at your old house, I think I came over one time and everybody was playing it probably. No, I think it was a work party for the escape game. Fiona brought it and we played it in uh, Stafford. Oh, nice. Nice. And then I spilled beer all over it. I was embarrassed. (laughs) And I'll never forget that moment for the rest of my life. (laughs) We all have those moments. Because Fiona we specifically said, masks. try not to get these dirty or wet. You were immediately like... <laughs> and I spilled beer all over it. Anyway, Weird Al, the um, record, the Scotty Brothers, which is a real thing. Scotty Bros are the first record company that gave him his uh, a deal. Um, he's like... I like when he's in, when he's like listening, he get like, they're listening to it and like, Daniel Radcliffe is fucking phenomenal in this movie. Daniel Radcliffe is such a good actor, like a like disproportionately good actor for the role. They could have gotten some schlub to do it; it would have been fine. But the fact that he's well, like he's a, got the Potter money, man. He can do whatever he whatever wants. He, he never wants. he never has to worry, and he's a good actor. So when it's like something like this comes around, around if he wants to do it, he's gonna he's gonna do it. Go watch Swiss Army Man. If you haven't seen Swiss Army Man, you have to watch Swiss Army Man. I think you guys told me that. I got. Please that. go watch Swiss Army Man. Daniel Radcliffe, for the rest of his life, will never have to worry about like ruining his career because he's just like, if no, you, I, ha- I have unlimited money for all time. If you <laughs> want to watch that. a movie that shows that Daniel Radcliffe doesn't have to do shit ever again, but also that P- since Paul Dano was in uh, Let There, uh, there Will Be Blood, he kind of doesn't really, he can p- kind of pick and choose. Paul Dano is wants. amazing. Paul well, I Dano, mean to say that like Daniel Radcliffe is in like, fucking seven movies that are still continuously Horns, making money to this day 
<laughs> I'm talking about all of the Harry Potter movies. Oh, sorry. I thought you were still saying that he can just do whatever he wants, but he was in Horns and Guns Akimbo, so. Yeah, no, but I'm saying that those seven movies specifically, the Harry Potter movies, are going to continuously fill his bank account until the day he until dies. Day he he never has to worry about ever making a floppy oh, movie. That's kind of like... That. Um, uh, well, go back in time to be a child actor and make a successful series of films. Yeah, go be Robert. Why Pattinson. can't I just be the guy that mops the floor, has like a heart of gold, and you know uh, shit happens? You know, that's kind of how Harrison Ford did it. He was just a handyman, and they were like, "Wow, you're handsome. Do you want to be Han, Han Solo?" <laughs> I mean, that's partially true. But... <laughs> he was a he was a struggling actor, though, right? He was a carpenter, and then he did line readings and stuff here and yeah. there, but. He wasn't primarily an actor, and uh, I don't know if he even really had a huge interest in doing it. But then, I no, think he did all the he line has readings. No interest for... in doing it. If you ever listen yeah. to him talk about the movies he's been in, I think he did all the <laughs> line readings for Han Solo for Star Wars. And then when they were trying to find an actual Han Solo, they're like, "Let's just can you just do it? <laughs> like yeah. you're pretty good at this character." Which blows my mind that he would be on. He'd be slumming it on an Apple TV show with Jason Segel. Now it blows my mind that he would be on a TV show. He's like, I'm fucking Harrison Ford, dude. I'm sure he... Well, he also has a bunch of movies that are going to continuously make him money until he's dead. Well, I'm hoping Robert Pattinson is similar that way because he's got the Twilight movies, which will fill his bank account from forever. And uh, yeah. uh, the what the fuck is that movie called? Batman. No. <laughs> The fucking the movie uh, Half Life or whatever it is. The or, movie uh, that he's in uh, by the guys that made uh, Uncut Gems. Oh, Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems. I have I no idea what you're talking about. Josh what is he Safdie. doing? It is it the space one? No. Here, just one second. Josh Safty made Uncut Gems, and he made Good Time. Good Time, starring. Oh, Robert Pattinson was the reason why I stopped being like, oh, they're making fucking the fucking shiny vampire of fucking Batman. I watched that movie and I was like, oh, he's going to Wait, you were, do, you were one of those people? I was at first. I was oh a naysayer God. at first. I'm an idiot sometimes. I jump on yeah, the never, Have you, you never seen, seen The Lighthouse? No, I hadn't seen The Lighthouse yet. Or also. Cosmet- uh, Cosmopolitan? I, I saw... I've, before, the, the when the Batman was announced, I had seen the first twilight and that's it then i watched mm. get out and then i or yeah, i watched uh, good time and then i watched the lighthouse and then i was like oh he's going to be an excellent bruce wayne but his bruce wayne was lacking because he's like an emo like it's not fun it's not a fun bruce wayne it's like a bruce wayne learning to be bruce wayne which isn't my favorite but his batman learning to be batman in that movie <clears throat> i thought was really good I like I don't watching. Think we're gonna get a fun Batman for a while. No, we're gonna get a fun Penguin. <laughs> we're gonna get a Penguin movie that might be fun. Um, fun. Penguin. Yeah, I mean the Nolan movies kind of solidified Batman as yeah. like a. It has to be super realistic, or else people aren't gonna like it. And then the Ben Affleck movies, people were all mad that he was killing people. <laughs> like, no, I like guys. Do you ever see when? Uh... <laughs> Tim when Burton Tim, made Batman yeah. stuff some dynamite in a guy's pants and pour him up a second later. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I'm pretty sure Batman yeah, kills people. see it. Okay. Batman I mean, you, don't see, you don't see people getting riddled with bullets in uh, the Ben Affleck ones either. I'm pretty sure that people. Batman doesn't kill people thing just comes from, like, the cartoon versions of Batman for kids. And and the, the Nolan ones, the but Nolan he just ones. still does kill people in those ones. He just yeah. doesn't want to kill people. He very well almost... bring back the Adam West one. Adam West never, Adam West never killed anybody. That Batman doesn't. Kill no, but like, can we bring back that campy? Can we bring back the pal? Joel Schumacher brought back two. Do you think there's a way twice. to do that but make it good? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Because Joel Schumacher did it twice. No, he did not. Yes, he did. He did. That, he thing. wanted to make Adam West Batman. <clears throat> he just had yeah, the but he, did. he had the tapestry that. Tim Burton had, he had colors. He had a lot of colors and nipples. That's not Adam West. Yeah, and Dutch angles. And like a Batman credit card. And a Batman credit card. <laughs> that part was, I mean, it, it still makes me laugh. I don't like, like it, but it makes me laugh. I think you look at that with rose colored glasses because we, we were age appropriate. But when you go back and watch those and you listen to Joel Schumacher talk about it, he was literally like, I wanted to bring fun back to Batman after Tim Burton made it crappy, but they wanted me to keep the fucking 
aesthetic. Dark. So right. I had to use the aesthetic. So I turned I turned up the green a lot in the, in uh, forever, but then in and Robin I was able to turn up all the colors. <laughs> yeah. So it's like that's as close to a <clears throat> '60s Batman as we're ever going to get. Probably is Batman and Robin. And that's also, the critical. '60s Batman is not good. It's not, like, good. It's not good. It's not. Why does anyone want that? It's unwatchable. <laughs> Yeah. If you want to go, if you want some Batman you've never seen, go back and watch the '50s Batman, which is also bad, but at least it's in black and white, and it's campy as fuck, and it's yeah. like just Batman doing detective shit. What yeah. about the cartoons? But he has guns. <laughs> it's like, fuck you! I'll yeah. kill you. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see what happens with this Flashpoint movie. Maybe it'll give us a new sort of perspective on what batman can be and maybe people will start changing their minds about things but i didn't mind the robert pattinson batman movie i thought it was pretty good no i liked it i liked it a lot except it was too long it, it I was just, like two full movies in one movie i just didn't like i don't like um moody goth bruce wayne but i fully believe that if you take the gotham tv show i believe that that version of bruce wayne does grow up to be the robert pattinson that TV show is a big pile of shit. <laughs> Whoa! Gotham was great. Gotham, no, it wasn't. Gotham was fine. <laughs> the, I I'm did a like fucking the girl and I'm going to take over I'm a, Gotham. I'm a girl. That's the female that characters from. in that show are, do not exist. They're just like, they they have a character and then they become evil. And they're once they're evil, they're just like, now it's time for ladies to take and over And they're all Gotham Commissioner City. Gordon's ex-girlfriends. Yeah, and then they all start <laughs> fucking each other. And you're like, what is this? bullshit show it's so bad and then even poison ivy's like i'm grown now commissioner gordon you want to that's the i'm like really girl fucking weird yeah and he's like you know no. what you've convinced me i'm gonna give you a record deal right now <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> i'm a girl um, um sorry let's get back and try yeah they mock right him here. but they're willing to reconsider him if he gets more if experience. he goes on and goes on his own so anyway he goes he goes to the punk bar where barf knows or whatever the fucking band they play and then he goes on stage he plays i love nice rocky mohawk road. by the way nice mohawk it's the biggest mohawk i've ever seen he plays i love rocky road which is a parody of i love rock and roll um and it's great because he wins over the audience in this weird way where he goes up this is based off a true thing that happened yeah. to him but he got booed off stage in re- in reality yeah is what i think happened Steve, they did not receive it well, no. If you can verify with your list. My list. Uh, uh, it seems the only true thing about this was that Dr. Demento was instrumental in launching his career. Okay. So, from what I understand... But he did not come up with adding weird to Al's no. name. <laughs> from what I understand is... Um, oh, side note. Michael McKean is the promoter and Patton Oswald is the heckler here. Um, I do, as I understand it, he, they played this, they played this show and at a punk bar and got booed off the stage in this one, he goes up and plays it very meekly. And then his friends start joining to help him, which is a great, there's a gag at the end of this, which I'll get to. Uh, and they blow everybody's mind so hard that big Bertha goes up to the fucking bartender. It's like, I'll take a scoop of rum raisin and a scoop of rocky road and the bartender's like we don't serve ice cream here and she's like if you don't start serving ice cream here this bar's going under uh which made me laugh um and then they played the song and then when they're they're getting cheered uh al's like why didn't you tell me you guys played instruments and his friend goes (laughs) it didn't seem relevant until now (laughs) it's like the whole fucking the whole lead up I, I like that little joke too I did enjoy that little it didn't joke seem well. relevant until now it's, a, it's such a good oh it's such a good moment um and then Rain Wilson of course is in the audience I don't think he was just in the audience at one of these random shows uh but he was instrumental in building Weird Al's career that's when they meet at, in this movie context so um he wants to be he they, he has a conversation with al after the show and he says i want he's like so you want to be like my mentor and i like this because it's a layered it's a layered joke because he says i want to be your dementor which he's saying to harry potter but he's dwight from the office the office has a very good joke about dementors in it i thought it was like 
I'm sorry if like I'm so doing... many entendres. So many. I'm sorry if I don't know if there, if well if this joke was being crafted if this many layers were being considered in it, but but I guess you're finding them. See, that's the wonderful thing about. I don't life. know what that you're what that is that you're holding. He's trying to show you his out. office yeah. Lego set. No, I know that there's lots of Deventer jokes in the office, but. Uh... I don't know if they were considered. Yeah, I was gonna say. I think I might this. be. I think I might be stretching a little bit. I the worst thing about gymnastics. prison was uh, was the dementors. Dementors. <laughs> oh, you had dementors. a little tip of the hat, if you will. <laughs> a little shot of Midori, if you will, was uh, it's from the office. Um, yeah. So he coins the name Weird Al. What if we call you Weird Al Yankovic? Um, no, so wait, wait, wait. I gotta give a quick little honorable mention. Al Yankovic. Ugh. So long. Doesn't exactly slip off the tongue, does it? And then he makes it even longer. Yeah. Which is great. So then the, when now we go to the, the probably the most popular part of this movie for, for people because it has every cameo under the sun. Um, oh, the grotto the party. The grotto party. So they go to this like backyard LA party, um, which is great in, a, in and of itself. They get there. Uh, Doctor Demento has a Pink Floyd shirt on, and I think that there's a famous picture of him wearing that Pink Floyd shirt, which I think is pretty great. When he shows up, he's like, "Oh, you brought your band? Okay, fine," because you get the vibe that Doctor Demento wants to sort of groom Weird Al. Um, during this sequence, we they get there. We see Devo, which is great. Uh, we see somebody playing Elton John. We see somebody playing Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman's played by Lonely Yorma. Hunt, by Yorma. Yorma from... Yeah. Yeah. Tiny Tim. Do you know who Tiny Tim is without looking? No, I couldn't figure out who. I, I don't even know who that is uh, celebrity-wise. Tiny Tim played the ukulele in the 80s and played, like, tip uh, tiptoeing through the posies or whatever. He just he has, like, a really him. weird singing voice. Yeah, he has a really high-pitched singing voice. He's he's part of a They a used genre. his music in Spongebob a lot. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> he's part of a genre of music called fringe and there's a lot of fringe artists i i would say weird al's fringe but i think he has too much pop notoriety but there are a lot of fringe artists uh like wesley willis is an example of a fringe artist who like got a monicum of fame um th- he's played by dimitri mm. martin Ooh. dimitri martin is a c- comedian from the mid 2000s if you don't know who he is uh, then we get. Oh Alice. yes, I do. Yeah, he draws yeah, the yeah, pictures. Yeah, he yeah. drew the pictures and played guitar. He's got the almost like a huge Dr. nose, hair. giant, <laughs> huge nose. We don't need to go there. <laughs> Why not? It's giant. Um, then we get Gallagher okay. talking to Alice Cooper. Gallagher played by Paul F. Tompkins. That guy's Al- hilarious. Alice Cooper played by Akiva from Akiva. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Salvador Dali is talking to. Um, Conan O'Brien. Who's Conan? Who, oh, fuck. Okay. Andy Warhol. Andy, Andy Warhol. Warhol. Conan O'Brien is Andy Warhol. He, his joke is fine. He says uh, he'll, he'll he'll have his fifteen minutes. I don't know. Yeah. Salvador... I think he was more funny that he was just being a weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, like, yeah, he's walking around like camera. filming everything yeah. <laughs> with his weird sunglasses. They're too small. <laughs> um, but Sa- who was Salvador Dali? Because Emo I, Phillips. I, I that, that was Emo one. Phillips, right? Okay. Yeah. We just cool. watched him in the other movie last week. Yeah, but this, the movies are 30 years apart. <laughs> you didn't recognize his weird way of speaking. But he had like an accent on. And that's my bad. I should have should have recognized. The next big cameo we get is moments later when Wolfman oh, Jack shows up. Jack Black. And he basically... Wolfman chal- Jack! He basically challenges Weird Al to write a parody. If you're so good, Al, write a parody right now, buddy! Um... And the challenge is to come up with a new parody of Another One Bites the Dust. And that's when John Deacon shows up and he's like, why don't, well, yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you do it? And in this moment, when they do a wide shot of the audience. Kaylin, are you strangling someone off camera? What are you doing? No, I'm trying to do the fart sounds. Oh, it looks like you're trying to murder somebody right next to your phone. <laughs> I get one. Sure. No, inappropriate. It were, were the first sounds not coming up? Can you hear that? I got one. <laughs> <laughs> best segment. Best segment. The best segment. 
Um, that's going to live in infamy forever. The uh, What we get here, though, is we see um, John Deacon, Frank Zappa, played by I don't know, I don't think anybody. You got to let your skin fat do all the jo- all the work. <laughs> all the jogging, is that what you're going to say? Uh, we see Elvira, and we see the lady from the B-52s whose name escapes me. Um, but yeah, we just get him playing... Um, Elvira's in there? Yeah. Yeah. The mistress of darkness of or whatever. Darkness, yeah. I know who Elvira is. I just didn't notice her. She was off to the left. Well, it was, uh, yeah. yeah. I noticed Divine. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Divine's there, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's one of those scenes where if you went back and watched it, you could find other people every time. To a degree. But so he so they play another one rides the bus another one rides the bus was uh is a song that's from his first album that's recorded with just um it was recorded on a suitcase the drums were recorded on a suitcase it's just suitcase and accordion the the accordion case yeah yeah the accordion case um just like in this which i th- which was done on a talk show i think it might have been i think it was dr demento's show was it dr demento's show i I thought it was like letterman or something though but the the story kind of goes that they didn't have a drum set and they were like we'll just play it bermuda's like i'll just beat on a on the accordion case and they recorded a version of that for their for for weird al's first album nice and uh but in this that song does have the little like you know slide whistles and kazoos and stuff. In this, yeah. it's the other weirdo fringe artists playing their like slide whistles and kazoos. So John Deacon then offers them to play Live Aid the and Tomorrow says, Show. Oh, no. The Tomorrow Show, okay, like a morning shitty morning show. Some talk show that I've probably seen at some point in my life, but don't recall. When you're wee high. Yes. Yeesh. So uh, we, I mean <laughs> So then we get the, the scene with um the sequence with Quinta Brunson playing Oprah, uh Weird Al on Oprah. This reminded me a lot of that scene in the complete aisle where they're just loading things into his hotel. Yeah. Um but in this we get sort of I want those Hawaiian shirts so bad. I just was like so a jealous. Whole, a company that whole of walk-in shirts. closet of Hawaiian shirts. What um, a what a holy grail. Uh, she kind of in summation asks him he's got five platinum records at this point but kind of asks him about the his family and you know he's like you know my family are fine but then that prompts him to call his mom she's unfazed by his fame um and then she makes it very clear that the dad hates weird al's music (laughs) Like he made me, that, he wanted me the, to tell you line, very specifically that uh, he hates your music and doesn't want to. Mostly, hear. he wants you to know he's definitely not proud of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wrote that down because it just another great parenting advice moment. La- I laugh my ass off. Every it's time. a great parenting moment. So then we go into uh, Weird House Hotel. He seems very lonely. Um, Doctor Demento is just kind of living there. He's eating chips and guac. Weird Al's like, can you just go to another room, please? And Doctor Demento's <laughs> like, come over here, we have to have a talk. And he's he's like, you know, you gotta don't let things you gotta let things roll off your back a little bit more. Here, have some guacamole. And he kind of tries to mentor, de-mentor him a bit. Uh, and then at the end of the at the end of mentoring him, he's kind of like, and you know what, you gotta expand your mind and you gotta just think about things outside the box. And Weird Al's like, what are you talking about? He's like, this is laced with LSD. So then we get the obligatory. To that point, right quick, if you guys ever have the opportunity, can you slip me something and don't tell me about it so that I can be surprised? Can I start tripping out of surprise? I would appreciate that. I would never drug you. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. As long as it's something that is fine, it's fine. I would never drug you. I get it. I get what you're saying. I would just never do that to anybody, no matter what. It's illegal. It's illegal. And also, <laughs> no, but I'm giving you unethical. the okay now, so it's not illegal. No, it's, I'm... trust me, dude. Kaylin, I'm sure you can find somebody else in your life to uh, accomplish that goal for you that yeah. isn't either of us. His I drug... mean, you guys are pretty far. You guys want to move here? Uh, no. 
when I'm there, I do, but when I'm not there, I don't. <laughs> um, his drug trip is basically hell. But he's going between the hell of his dad being like, you'll never accomplish anything. And sort of the heaven of seeing Dr. Demento floating in, in the sky with a third eye and being like, you have to eat all of this bran, which is confusing at first. And if you don't know anything about Weird Al's music, um, you'd be like, why is he talking about food so much? And he's like, you know, have some more chicken, have some more spam. It doesn't matter if it's baked or hammed. You know what that reminded me of? Um, how like in Forrest Gump, they take like, uh, you know, pop culture type things and put a spin on the origin of the. That's or whatever a good you point, are. actually. They kind of take all of Weird Al's little pop culture moments and add nonsensical backstory to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they kind of like not. There's no person called Forrest Gump who went through history creating all of these things. But this, exactly. This, you know, you're blowing my mind a little bit because this almost feels like the there's like weird like. In the DNA of the movie, Forrest Gump is kind of there, but for just specifically Weird Al's career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, this is how he comes up with this, the 100% original song "Eat It." Uh, also, is... fucking Jack Daniel Radcliffe looking good, buddy. So yeah. Oh, the... quick question: the face melting is that uh is that Raiders of the Lost Ark? Is that what that's paired in? I don't know. Maybe it looked exactly like it. But it was like his, his face was melting because it was an acid trip also. Yeah. Um, the the thing here is at the end, it's like, you have to come up with this song and you'll be born again. And he cracks out of an egg, soaked, chiseled, just all abs, all like abs from his neck to his fucking taint. Um, an eight pack, if you will. A not, fucking not 20 that pack. fucking pussy six pack. He... He must have already been in crazy shape, but they were probably like, "Can you just get crazy jacked for this? <laughs> can you just, can you just get fucking Mac from It's Always Sunny shredded? Can you just get can when they just... put oil on you, it makes the shot the the light bend, so you, it looks that much better. That's why wrestlers put baby oil on, <laughs> but they had to stop. They had to stop doing that for a while in WWE because. Uh, it gets on the ropes <laughs> when people climb the ropes. Ooh, they slippery. Slip. Yeah. Ooh. So they, they That's kind not of, good. they don't let everybody baby oil up anymore. Um, and you can see between matches and when you go to a WWE show, you can see people come out and like wipe the ropes down. It's crazy. Like a strip club. <laughs> Ugh. Um, <laughs> hey. I mean, times, that's basically what wrestling is. A, is it's kind of same, like same thing. Yeah. It's a performance to music, it's sports and entertainment. Yeah, it's strip clubs, professional wrestling, figure skating, all sports entertainment. Uh, <laughs> Yo, figure skating is pretty wild. I saw it once. Same, seen it a few times. So he goes into the um, back to the Scotty Bros, and he's like, "I got this original song, 100 percent original that I came up with called Eat It." and that's the thing about that song after i watched this movie today i was walking around the house going i like his little exchange with will forte when he tells him he can't smoke in there yeah badass give me your hand badass badass so it's 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 funny because in the first time you see will forte he's like giving it to him he's like you're old you suck and you're ugly and you're the worst and this time he's super submissive about it. He's like, well, you know, fine. And uh, that's when Madonna shows up. Madonna wants to get that Weird Al bump that Quinta Brunson brought up in the, the Oprah interview. And but now is... he only does his own original music, so he says yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. I'm an original songwriter now. Also, there's a funny moment here where they show the Eat It video, but with Daniel Radcliffe's like face... Uh, kind of deep faked onto it and it looks really weird but I couldn't like so I was watching that and I couldn't figure out if they remade the video and like it like no. actually remade it remade it like all of it it's a deep or if that was an original it's, video it's definitely the original because of how like the grain yeah no the grain was was uh not it was put onto it but you can tell that it's the original because everything else around his face. 
Right. Because that's Weird Al, but with somebody deep faked onto him. Um, this is where we get the Dr. Demento trying to tell him that, like, Zeppelin wants to open for you. Um, he's like, no, fuck them. And it's like, but we want, we want to be the new James Bond. He's like, I'm not going to be the new James Bond or the new Indiana Jones. Hard like, pass. Yeah. Pablo Escobar loves you as well and wants you to go play a show for him. And then we get him, they get, they show a picture, a video of him doing, I love Rocky road where they're shooting the guns off, which was pretty fun. Ricky. No, no, no. They do the Ricky. Or Ricky. Yeah. Hey, Ricky. <laughs> hey, Ricky. <laughs> also, um, can I say that, for anyone out there who someone's having a conversation with you and you and someone else are making out, it's really weird and annoying and awkward and annoying. <laughs> I think that's what they were trying to hit home. Kind of like a Yoko Ono thing. Um, where they're like so in love that they can't like focus on anything. So then we find out that this... Oh yeah, so they're at dinner. They get a call from Weird Al gets a call from Scotty Bro saying, "You know, I don't want to alarm you, but this uh, I'm an up and coming star, Michael Jackson, who in this I assuming this movie took place in 1984 was like the already like the biggest star, just the kid version. Um, he's got or the teen, like the Justin Bieber version um, of Michael Jackson, where." He has this song, it's a parody of your song called Beat It. And Weird Al's like, what the about f- eggs? What is it about? A- eggs? It's like, no, it's about be- uh, beating people up or not getting into a fight. I don't know. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. That was hilarious. That part made me laugh. It's like, uh, I don't really know. It's like about fighting or not fighting. <laughs> or not fighting, not getting into a fight. And then Weird Al says, what kind of sick freak would write a song that already exists with different lyrics? <laughs> <laughs> and the Madonna's like, you know, I see you spiraling, and I, you know, what helps when you're spiraling is alcohol. And she gets him hooked on alcohol because what she's trying to do is sink her, think, or sink her claws and succubus. Yep. Yeah, so she can get the weird owl bump. Um. So now he's, uh, it's backstage at the concert, the big concert that they're about to have. Um, he's wasted. He, he he's yells, so wasted. He can't even give her the Yankovic bump. Hey, oh, hey. <laughs> Cause he does actually, yeah, he does try to come up with a parody right there on the spot and can't do it. And he just yells at all of his bandmates that he could replace. He's like, you think you could play the drums for me? I could replace you with a drum machine. You think you can play guitar? I'll replace you with a guitar machine. You think you could replace? I'll replace you with a, some sort of machine, as well. That was good. I liked it, and I enjoyed it. And then he decides to drive his car, and she's like, "Take your keys." Or he she decides planned to leave. it the whole time. She was yeah. like, "Oh, he's gonna get in an accident. There's gonna be a doctor, surgeon." rhymes with virgin she could well, i'm going to initiate he says the... in this scene he says nothing right he's like ah nothing rhymes with virgin and it's it, does she know the whole time that surgeon did she could have just told him she's like what are you, what are you saying but i guess no, she's he, more diabolical than that's that. true she, is she very, had to incept him she is very diabolical um, that's when we cut, he drives the car. He's on every radio station during the, while, while he's driving, which I thought was funny. Um, then that's where he gets into a car crash and it catches up from the, the stuff from the beginning. Um, and he's, he wakes up, they like pronounce him dead and he wakes up and it's basically like, get me a pen. And you get, we get like a surgeon transitions to, he's back on stage. He does the song and um for his encore he's gonna play eat it and he goes back and comes out and he does the jim morrison Morrison. yeah jim morrison this is the end bit which which did really happen in jim morrison did this where he was gonna like he was with his dick out well what happened was he was being you couldn't swear on stage in the 60s like you couldn't go up there and just say whatever you wanted yeah. So the police were like ready to tackle him and he just skirted the line enough that he was able to record the original. This is the end, which you can get like bootleg versions of um, where he just loses his mind on stage. Very similar to this yeah. Yeah. But here. It's like, you want to see it? I'm going to whip it out. 
and he pulls out his accordion and yeah that's when they're at they, they're at a diner next and yeah. uh did you have something to interject there no no, no. we're I getting like close we're getting your close i'm hilarious. trying to take us to the end here um then we get madonna and, and uh and al are having a conversation um at a diner after about how you know she wants that bump still um he's got the idea and then some goons come and this is where they grab her and take her into a van and weird al fights like john wick fully kung fu fights these people or like action movie fights these people and uh don't hurt me (laughs) (laughs) and it ends with like that like the guy who the big bald guy who comes to the kitchen is in so many things he's even in the office in the uh threat level midnight he's the guy that comes at the very beginning to like take michael out um but he put weird al puts his head in like a panini press and hits the ding order up loved it and what's the line from that you liked from uhf um during the rambo part like you shouldn't have messed with me or whatever because i think it's the same line that he says when he runs out of the diner you shouldn't have messed with me that's what you get for messing with me i don't remember something like that anyway well we basically have a updated version of that scene where he gets coming up to Colombia yeah. and goes on a rampage <laughs> to break into Pablo Escobar's compound where he confronts the drug lord and Shout kills him. The guy that plays Pablo, hilarious. Yeah, so this this just in a nutshell, this what happens is he goes, he confronts Pablo Escobar, who I think the funniest part of this scene is like the mariachi band is playing for his birthday, and he's like, Hold on, let me turn down the music and pulls out a gun and shoots them all. <laughs> Which I thought Arturo Castro. Yeah. Uh and Paul Esquire is a huge fan. He talks about how he has all his albums from the Columbia music. Twelve just twelve albums for a penny, well, it's a great deal. Um Is that, it uh the US dollar more than the Colombian penny or some shit like that? No. Do you remember Columbia House? Uh yeah. they're uh, making a funny Kind of dated joke. Yeah, that only extremely dated joke. Grew up that in the one, 90s. That one definitely went over my head for sure. Um, yeah, you get like a pamphlet in the mail, and you could get like ten discs for ten CDs, or you, sometimes they would do movies for like mom, a dollar. Yeah. My mom got scammed that, by that familiar. like a couple times. Familiar, yeah. But then you have to like subscribe to them for a year or some weird thing. I don't remember how it worked, but I think it worked by you had you got the records for a penny, and then you kept what you wanted but most people didn't send any of them back because they were rubes and then they you would get billed for 12 records or 12 albums and then it would oh be... like those uh those uh trial offer things that you get online these days yeah yo to all the viewers out there if you ever get a trial offer and you want to try it make sure you call their customer service no. to tell them to stop it you don't have to call them you just go online and you order it and then cancel it immediately because most most or maybe it's about online what do i know i'm an old man look at these gray hairs <laughs> i'm older than you like how you pointed <laughs> to one specific spot on your yeah. head i literally have like head. one gray hair right here I, i'm older than you kaylin you just <laughs> went gray when you were 22 <laughs> oh man uh, anyway, yeah, I wrote the gun stuff reminds me of UHF because he fully Rambo's in there. Um, he tells Rude. he tells them they can leave if he plays a concert. I was like, I'm not your monkey. They have a bit more of a back and forth, and then he says, Okay, you can just leave then. And then he's like, Nope. Actually, I was lying and shoots Weird Al. Weird Al has the t- the six platinum records on, which keeps him from platinum. Lying. Um. And then he's like, hey, look, I've got these platinum records. And also, hey, Pablo, and throws one of them. And it goes into his head, and it looks so good. (laughs) It looks so real. I was really impressed. I was really impressed with that part. And then we get this, like, really on-brand Weird Al moment where he's like, oh, hold on a second. I go get my 
my record back and he leans down behind the desk and he like you hear like a squelching sound and him pulling out he's like oh gross 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 oh it's really in there ugh, ugh, ugh. Yeah. um and as he's leaving madonna's like you know we could just take this whole empire for ourselves nobody's ever gonna know and uh i was like no i'm gonna as go it back stands weird al has nine platinum records there you nice. go so there's a monicum of truth for for that because at the time he must have had there must be a sort of truth to that and then also like almost all of his other records except for the ones that came out later went gold yeah like almost every single one it's that's like a million sold and the it, platinum's like 10 million or something or 10 million and is the gold ones and the ones million. that didn't are like polka party <laughs> Yep, which is and a great like, album. Uh, and the UHF soundtrack he also did, but that didn't get anything. Yeah, because UHF uh, was a commercial failure because of fucking Batman. UHF was great, and it was just bad timing. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was just because of Batman. But... <laughs> because of fucking Tim Burton. It was, it was, it was ahead of its time. You know, see, the problem with being a trailblazer is you got to wait for everyone else to catch up. Fucking slow true. pokes? What are you doing? Poking so slow back there. To be fair, though, um, Mel Bad Brooks, Hair Day double platinum. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's what I'm, I think he peaked at Bad Hair Day, and that's why they. So did Appaloosa, actually, or Alapalooza. Alapalooza. Right. Well, yeah, that was a huge album for him too. I remember that being like me being like anticipating his album coming out era. Yeah. Um. So he goes, he goes, so he like leaves the jungle and he, he's like, I know what I had to do. Also, Madonna's a terrible shot. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I went, I went too far. So he's trying to leave and she's like, I'll kill you. You know too much. And he's like, you, you <laughs> won't. And she's just shooting at him wildly. I don't think it's that he sh- she's a terrible shot. I think it's that she loves him and doesn't want to kill him. I think what's the implication there. Ugh. But uh, he, as he's leaving, the voiceover is like, I had seen so many things. I'd been in, introduced to the Illuminati. I, I knew the secrets <laughs> about the moon landing and JFK and the truth about JFK. But I knew there was one thing I had to do. And he goes to the factory. And we get the, the funny scene where the guy's like, what you do here is you just turn this to the left. And then when it goes green, you pull the lever. And then when it goes red, you turn the lever up and you turn the thing the other way. He's like, what? So he does it once, and then he presses a button, <laughs> and then a guy gets pulled slowly into like a grinder or something, which is <laughs> so fucking good. So I do funny. like that we, from the beginning, we don't know what he makes at the factory, and he's like, you'll find out when you work there. He finally works there, and he's like, what do we make here? And, <laughs> and the, the guy's guy like, laughs his ass off. Yeah. Your dad said you Your were dad funny. dad said you were a funny one. Yeah, so the dad comes in and we get the like the heart to heart moment where he's like, you know, I didn't, I didn't tell you about this. Well, he's like, you know what? I'm proud of you. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt now. Then they're at the dinner table, and he gives him, he tells him this long story about how he followed his whole career and he loved him. Meanwhile, so every time a, a song comes up in this movie, Weird Al has this like anime moment where he like has an epiphany and it's like that's gonna be the song name but his mom is is feeding him the lines to the to fat i'm fat (laughs) i know it you know it you know and he's like whatever mom we get it you put on a couple pounds it's fine it it doesn't matter which i thought was like that's it's a subverted turn of the hat or whatever you keep saying turn of the wheel Turn, turn of the, the table. table, yeah. The tip of the hat. The tip of the hat and a turn of the table. Um, yes. He's like, whatever. And the dad's like, and you, th- you know, you think the subversion is that he's going to come up with eat it, and that's going to, you know, the movie's almost over at this point. And what happens is he opens a thing and a thing falls to the ground, and the dad's like, don't read that, don't read that. And it turns out that when his the reason why he hates the accordion so much is because when he was a boy, he was Amish. And in the Amish like religion and community, you there's no technology or music or anything. So they do get an opportunity to see those things called Rumspringa. And he did Rumspringa, and when he went out there, 
Rumspring is like you get to go and just sow, sow your wild oats. You get to experience the city and the technology and the people and just fucking lose your mind for like a month or whatever. And then decide if you want to go back to like the Amish. Like Shambhala? Like what? I think it's called Shambhala. It's in BC. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, decide if you want to go back to the Amish community or uh, go into like society. And the dad found an accordion. And it turns out that he got good at the accordion. So when he brought the accordion back to his community, they shunned him. So he also wrote parodies during this time as well. He had like little ditties. So this song is basically the blueprints to Amish Paradise, which makes no sense because Gangsta's Paradise didn't come out till like 1995. In world, we're still in 1985 or possibly still 1984. And this is where things get a little dicey if they haven't been dicey already. Be, be, very quick though, I just got to say, we get another great parenting advice. I thought I could crush your ideas before they could become dreams yeah (laughs) i like that you (laughs) i like that you kept track of like the dad being horrible because it's really fucking good that one was a good one that one was yeah um yeah so basically we just get a like a flash sideways to him performing amish paradise uh, somehow in the 80s um, we we get a shot of a guy lo- who looks like Coolio like mad in the audience and um, yeah he performs at the Grammys and then when they're, he, he wins the Grammy for best record and then um, he gets assassinated by a, one of Madonna's cronies she's like you know and that's how Weird Al died in 1985 he died at the Grammys in 1985 and uh, rest in or peace, with- Weird Al. Or did he? Because we get it like a, a, a MCU style, like post credits, like right before the credits actually start. Remind like, me of like uh, Friday the Thirteenth or something, or yeah, where he's not dead. Well, before that too, I wanted to, an honorable mention to the uh, like the mo- like the pictures from his life that just start with like a picture of him as a kid. <laughs> The a real ones, of his, yeah, and then it gets <laughs> picture of him with uh, picture of Ronald Reagan, like being like, "Oh, I can't believe Weird Al is dead." That get <laughs> just get crazier and crazier. Also, the cameos in the Grammy scene in the audience, there's a bunch of them too. There's like a Cindy Lauper, and uh, his actual wife is sitting next to um, the C- he, CEO. Yeah, when they, sh- when they show yeah. the record producer guy who's played by Weird Al, his actual wife is sitting in there. Yeah. We also get a, a parody of. Diana Ross and Hulk Hogan who present yeah. the award to him um, yeah Madonna kills him she's still at, like the Weird Al died in 1985 at the Grammys um, yeah he dies and then we get the final shot of her going to his gravestone and a hand coming up so they could make a sequel to this if they wanted to I doubt they will but <laughs> They could fabricate some more things. So that's the end of uh, the movie. We're right on time end here. End credit scene. I like it when movies have end credit scenes now. Like yeah. it, it's to look forward to. The end credits were like worth watching too because the song at the end is good. But uh, yes, you're absolutely right. So I was watching this, waiting for the. I was letting the credits roll, uh, so to eventually get to the MPAA number. Which I forget if I said it on the recording or the pre-show, but no MPA double MP double A number. But I was I was I was letting it roll, waiting for it, and I normally like with any other movie, it's just some whatever song. And what was I thinking? Not to think to pay attention to what he would put as a final song. Mm-hmm. And so it's playing, and then all of a sudden, like I, I started to pay attention a little bit. I was like, oh. He's make he's doing a parody. He's it's so meta, so meta. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So let's go into our final thoughts here. Uh, Steve, we'll start with you. <clears throat> final thoughts. Um, I guess I'll do my what went well and what could have done better first. Uh, I think that in terms of a fun narrative and a. Uh, you know, an aping on a biopic because biopics I always think are really 
up their own butt a lot of the yeah. time and I don't really like them. So I, I, I completely enjoyed the idea of them being like, let's just roast all of these types of movies. I know that some people absolutely love them, but I despise them. And anytime I'm forced to watch, you know, this story of fucking Elvis or some shit, like I don't give a fuck. What about James <laughs> Dean? I think you remember how I felt about James Dean. <laughs> we talked about it on this show. I'm actually uh, yeah. excited to watch the Elvis movie, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm not talking specifically about the new one. I haven't seen it, so I can't say that it's bad. But I, uh, I just think that Elvis was a bad person, and why do we glorify him still That's to true. this goddamn day? That's true. He married a 15-year-old, guys, uh, <laughs> when he was a full-grown man. So uh, anyway, let's talk about this movie. What went well? That entire concept and just making it a ridiculous idea, similar to something like the Walk Hard, like we were talking about earlier, or Pop Star. Yeah, watch that again. Um, but uh, yeah, what could have been better? Um, I would have liked to have seen more cameos spread out. I think a little bit across it. I think that these types of movies lend themselves really well to having cameos placed strategically. And there were a lot and there were a fun, you know, appearances here and there, but outside of that one scene where they clearly just called everybody that day and was like, can you guys meet at this <laughs> house? They probably shot that in a neighborhood where they all live. <laughs> They're like, who lives around here? Conan, you want to come be Andy Warhol for a couple hours? Um, so yeah, it would have been nice, to, nice to see a little bit, more of that here and there but again they did an, an admirable, admirable job of doing that either way um, but yeah the movie overall I enjoyed it um, I don't have a ton to say about it just because you know we basically walked through the entire story um, but it's good it's good enjoyable I recommend it um, I think it's probably my favorite of the three um, sequentially going backwards in the timeline it's probably this UHF and then the complete owl um, just because again the complete owl is not a movie <laughs> it's just a collection of things it felt like we were watching a special features DVD that would be a part of like one of these other two movies but uh, yeah I, I give this movie um, I don't know a secret backstory that your dad never told you about <laughs> nice. and then one day he tells you and you're like wow that was amazing Nice. I That's like good. That. I like that a lot. Uh, Kalen, why don't you hit us with your final thoughts? You got it, birthday boy. I'm the birthday boy. Um, <clears throat> For 45 so, more minutes. If, <laughs> if this was the last thing we were to get from Weird Al, what a great note to go out on. Uh, it's easily consumable for fans and non-fans alike. And I wouldn't be surprised if Weird Al experienced the Yankovic bump after this movie. And I would be happy if ever there was a Hidisto bump to movies because of us. Maybe one day. Um, great acting, great editing, lots of fun. Uh, for my What Went Well, I put Daniel Radcliffe I was uh, hypnotized or whatever. I could not think of an even better. I couldn't. I couldn't think of one. I made a note. Think of one during the pod. Still couldn't think of one. I enjoyed this movie. And I... There, I had no... There was nothing that took me out of it. There was nothing that brought me down. I enjoyed it front to back. Um, <clears throat> I hope they make a physical copy. Because this is a buy. And I give it a chase your dreams, don't let anyone stop you, and be as weird as you want. Wow, incredibly poignant from Kalen this week. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you guys for indulging me once again. Another year where I'm like, it's high concept a little bit to try to do this. Um, I think I enjoyed this one more than probably more than last year it was a lot of trey parker matt stone last year i will say um i wanted to ask you guys out of the music videos we saw from the complete owl and including in uhf 
Um, and I would go so far as to say the music video for Another One Rides the Bus, I guess, in this movie. Did you guys have a favorite music video? For me, it's always going to be Dare to be Stupid. Honorable mention to um, <clears throat> the uh, the love song. I like you know the Star Wars one. <laughs> Dare no, I don't. Stupid, I don't mean. I don't mean overall. I mean from these oh. movies. No, I don't know. Okay, but that's if that's fair. If you don't care that much about the songs that were in, if your favorite one is the the Saga Begins, and that's perfectly reasonable. I had the Yoda one. No. I so I told you guys before that I don't really like music videos, and Weird Al doesn't really do anything in his music videos that are different than other music videos that right. exist in his era. He's he's aping on them and making fun of them. And I think that it's funny that he does all the things that I don't like about music videos in order to like basically make a commentary on like, isn't this dumb? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that is dumb. Um, so I don't really have a favorite one, but I do, you know, I like, I like fat as well when he gets really fat. <laughs> <laughs> slower and slower. But yeah, that one is, wasn't in any of the movies either. So, right. No, my answer is no. <laughs> there was a hat tip to it in this one. There was a hat tip to it in this one, and I thought that's where the the first time I watched it, I was like, "Oh, they're gonna do the fat music video." But it's like, no, Amish Paradise, which makes no sense. Cause... I also, to save time, when we were doing the complete Al, I kind of skipped through most of the music. videos. Oh, I absolutely skipped the music all. videos because yeah. I had seen I've seen them a million times. I know what the yeah. they they don't have anything really to talk about in them because it's just a song. Yeah. Um. Kaylin, did you have anything to to add before I move on here? The so when uh, I remembered when it came on, the Dare to Be Stupid and all the like the kind of like eighties kind of flash and eighties kind of editing and all the like kind of little background stuff, I actually really did enjoy that. The other <clears throat> the other video, what was the one that was a uh, a spoof on Dire Straits, uh, Money that's, for Nothing? That's uh, yeah, that's um, Beverly Hills. Uh, Beverly Hills fam- Beverly Hill Billies Beverly Hill I Billies I think I like that one from UHF from what yeah. it, like from watching like watching them yeah and I kind of realized that like if you like all the whole movie UHF is just a music video an extended yeah. music video <laughs> yeah with interludes yeah just a one giant interlude for that music video um alright well my final thoughts I didn't write anything down because I just wanted to talk about um how I love Weird Al which I did a lot. I think I covered everything I wanted to cover, even just talking about these movies. Um, this movie is very special to me because when I saw the original trailer, I was like, they'll never, they'll never make that. Cause back when they, like 10 years oh. ago, they didn't just make cool things like this all the time. And they kind of do that now more, more and more over the years. Like they, they people find budgets to make cool things. And the last of us is a great example of them finally making a video game movie that their video game tv show that like is true to the content and i feel like this movie is exactly what weird al a weird al biopic should be it should be equal parts comedy mel brooks um absurdist it should be equal parts like it had a bit of heart to it you know there's like a redemption arc for weird al he gets becomes an alcoholic and has to like work his way back up and realize that the music's in him whether he does parody or original music he you know he rekindles his relationship with his father him and his mom have that relationship that they have like there's a bit of heart there right like even though it is a pretty hard comedy and it really just i don't know it reminds me of something that i always wanted and never had and then now exists what went well? The whole movie. The whole movie went well. I don't think there's that there's any real slow parts. I don't... Weirdly enough, I don't like the, like, part where they go to South America, where they go to Mexico. Like, it didn't, like, take me out of it. Um, <clears throat> but I guess my even better would be, like... That part didn't really resonate with me. I wanted more in-canon stuff. And even the, like... As funny as the Amish Paradise bit is, the fact that that song didn't come out for ten years, for like for another ten years, I almost may have preferred them to just do Eat It. But the like bait and switch is so good that I wouldn't change much about this movie. My rating is four to five, easy four to five, 
and my real rating is <clears throat> like you know that thing of when like you're making a sandwich and the radio starts skipping and then you have an epiphany <laughs> to write a song about a sandwich meat that's yeah, my that happens idea. to me all the time that's my. And I mean, I'm not even joking. I walk around my house making songs up all the time. Songs <laughs> I'll never share. <laughs> me, either, me too. Uh, me either, and me too. So I thought of a, I thought of a segment because of this movie, which I'm not sure if it'll be able to play out later on. But what was the 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 origin or the original thought that sparked the movie? Do you know what I mean? So like this one was that little spoof. Yeah, thing that they did, right? We talk about that a little bit sometimes, like when, when we talk about like um, what are, what the original script might have looked like. John Carpenter right. is like a good realm to talk true. about those things. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it seems like John Carpenter might come up with a concept to work backwards sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's our that's my birthday month, and I'd like to thank you guys for Woo! coming along. I need on... a noisemaker. Um, yeah, thank you so much. And, uh, for, for Kalen and Steven, I'm Jason. For Jason and for Kalen, I am Steven. And for Steven and Jason, I'm Kellen. And I have to ask, (laughs) I have to ask the question. Wait Wait. a second. What did Steven say? He said it. He did it right. Did he? Yep. Yes. Did he say you were me? Yeah, he said, no. I'm a crazy person? And hey. Did you see this one? You were probably just thinking of what you were going to say next in your head while I was saying it. <laughs> and hey, what I was saying. did you see this one? <laughs> hey, did you see this one? Uh, hey, did you see this one? what this is meant to mean hey who did see this one no take three take it again Uh, boy and he tipped his hat like so